Hello, I'm Penny Melville Brown from Baking Blind and I've been having a wonderful time cooking around the world with professional chefs and home cooks. But because I'm blind, I have to rely completely on my other senses, whether that's smell, taste, touch or hearing. And now you can see how I manage it. I'd arrived in Melbourne, Australia at exactly the time that their famous horse race, the Melbourne Cup, was started. It is a huge event in the annual city calendar. A couple of days later, they were still celebrating with Oaks Day. I was visiting the top catering college, Holmes Glen, and ended up in a cupboard. Hi there, it's Penny Melville Brown again from Baking Blind, and I'm in this fabulous college in Melbourne where they're teaching hospitality. Where exactly are we, Renee? So we're at Holmes Glen TAFE in Melbourne and we're at the Waverley campus. Um, why are we in here? <laughs> we're in our storeroom, so we have a lot of fascinating ingredients in here, ranging from all our spices, dry goods, everything that we need for the chefs to create amazing food. And also, it's just a little bit quieter because it's chaotic out there, isn't it? It's very They're just preparing for lunch. And we've got a special lunch on today, haven't we? We do. So we have Oaks Day today. So we are catering for about 140 people. We're doing a set three-course menu. What is Oaks Day related to? So Oaks Day is just a magnificent race day today after the Melbourne Cup. And a lot of ladies come out and get dressed up and celebrate the day instead of going out to the racetrack. They're coming, yeah. they're coming to our fabulous campus. It, so, it saves their stiletto heels on the turf, it does, doesn't it? It does, <laughs> <laughs> We have the same problems at Ascot. Yeah. Because the Melbourne Cup is a really major event here, isn't it? It is, it's huge. And um, I'm only new to Melbourne for the last couple of years. And it's fascinating how the whole city just really gets into it. It's, it's not just Melbourne Cup, it's before Melbourne Cup and it's a few days after that everyone's still celebrating and getting out to, to join in the festivities. I mean, where else but in Australia could you have a public holiday just for a race, a horse race? Only in Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing for this lunch today? What is, what is the menu? So our menu today consists of a ceviche of uh, snapper and salmon on an avocado salsa with a lovely tiger milk dressing. We also are doing a smoked beef, which is sliced thinly. It has cured egg yolk. It also has a horseradish bone, potato crisps, and a parsley puree, and it's divine. <laughs> no, no modesty there. No, then. not at all. <laughs> and so what we've got here are students absolutely at the top of their form. They are, and they're really, they love, they're very proud of the food that they do here. Yeah. They're very proud to be part of Holmes Glen, which I am as well. And so about how long will they have done their training to get to this sort of level? Some are in their second stage, so they've already completed at least a year. Some are only new this year, and some have only been here um, even shorter times. So we have quite a variance of stages that they're at. And you're keeping in charge of all this as one of the tutors? I'm one of the tutors today, <laughs> trying to uh, get it all happening on time. Yep. In that case, we won't hold you up anymore. Thank you. And let you get back to keeping them all in order. Fabulous. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. And the college is also famous for all the hospitality and catering training it gives for the Australian Defence Forces. Security restrictions meant we couldn't film any of the trainees, but we did talk to some of their instructors. One taught me how to transform just basic mayonnaise into a Caesar salad dressing. This is, uh, well, this is a mayonnaise that's now being turned into uh, the, the derivative of Caesar salad. It is you checking the flavour every step of the way, actually. It makes a huge difference. And another of the chef instructors was testing the trainees with really tricky phyllo pastry. They were doing desserts before they were uh, starting pastry, so we often leave those more technical sort of units near to the end, so they've gained some, I guess, uh, a little bit more confidence and a bit more of a skill set. And I had to sing for my supper, or at least give a talk to those military trainees about my time serving in the British Royal Navy. So, back in 1977, I joined 
the Women's Royal Naval Service. Okay, are you alert? <laughs> I didn't get much chance to cook, but it was absolutely exhilarating talking to all those young trainees as they started out on their careers in food. Great training is essential and they were getting the very best. Next time I'm making bread with Danny in one of those super duper throw it all in and it cooks it machines. Just wait. <laughs>